Hello, and welcome to the December 2017 edition of Outer Update. I'm your host, Brad Moxness. And I'm Matt Holzer. Thanks for joining us. Brad, remember that time we ate at that new restaurant? What was it called? That was the Fable Farmer, Matt, and that was last week. Oh yeah, that was good. Let's take a look at what they have to offer and see what else is going on around town. Senior reporter Tom Matson here at the Fabled Farmer with Mary Robertson. So, Mary, where is the Fabled Farmer located? We're at 412 West Lincoln Avenue. Oh, what kind of food are you serving here? We try to do as much as possible the fresh, organic, local farm to table. Um, obviously, in the wintertime, that's tougher to do, but we do a lot of just fresh produce that we prepare right here on site, and the menu is we do a bowl theme, so we have a lot of dishes that are kind of featured in a bowl um, with a lot of different um, vegetables, some meat, um, special sauces that we make here on site. And then we do a lot of salads. We also have some things that are just a little bit more common and easy to relate to, like hamburgers. And we do a pulled pork sandwich, a BLT. So, yeah. That sounds really good. Um, are you guys hiring here? We are currently hiring for a part-time cook position. Um, it's tough to fill because it's, there's just never enough hours. And then if you have too small of a crew, if somebody gets sick, you don't have enough. Um, you just don't have enough people. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. But we have a couple of shifts a week that we're trying to fill. Uh, what are your hours? We are open um, Monday to Saturday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we have a breakfast menu that we feature from 7 to 11. And um, again, it's kind of that really fun and different um, dish. We have a scramble bowl. Um, the eggs are actually laid two <laughs> miles down the road. And they're fresh every day, so they're really good. Like people that have had our dishes here um, for breakfast think that they're really pretty amazing. You can tell the difference between a regular egg and a farm fresh egg. So um, we have that, we have a bakery case, and then from 11 to three is when we feature our lunch. That's scene reporter Max Wolf and Lauren Warner. We're walking the halls to find out who has part-time jobs. I'm here with Jared Darwin. Where do you work? I work at the West Ridge Theater here in town. How many hours a week do you work there? Uh, probably about 15, maybe. What's your favorite part about the job? Uh, how chill it is there. We really don't have to do anything. Does, um, does working affect any schoolwork at all? Um, not really, no. We're here with Brandon Gilland. Um, do you have a part-time job? Uh, yeah. Where do you work? Uh, the Fergus Falls Dairy Queen. How many hours do you work a week? Um, I typically work like 20 to 30 hours a week. And do you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun and the bosses are really nice, I guess. And does it like affect um, your school work? Like, does it affect school? Um, not typically really. I get all my stuff done. And they're pretty lenient. Like, if you want to go on break and, like, work on your homework. Perfect, thank you. I'm here with... Kate Kochevar. So, Kate, where do you work? I work at Herberger's. What do you do at Herberger's? I'm just a cashier. How many hours a week do you work? Um, about 15. What's your favorite part about your job? I like to meet a lot of new people, so that's fun. Does it affect your schoolwork at all? No, not really. I'm here with Naomi Besky. So Naomi, what is your part-time job? I'm a homemaker at Pioneer. How many hours do you typically work? Um, probably like 17 or 18. What is your favorite part about your job? Um, I love talking to the elderly people. And does it affect your schoolwork at all? Yes. I'm here with Aaron Billings. So Aaron, what is your part-time job? Uh, Big Wood Event Center. What do you do there? Bouncer. Do you like kick people out of weddings and stuff? You ever had to do that before? Uh, no, but close to. <laughs> um, do you like working there? Yeah, that's all right. How many hours do you typically work? Uh, summertime, probably about 10 to 12 a week. 
because it depends on how many people do events and uh, weddings and stuff like that. Does um, it affect um, your schoolwork? No. Thank you. Dead phone. Got my charger. Oh, yeah, my winter survival kit. First, you need a hat gloves to stay warm. What else do you need, Jaden? It's good to have a first aid kit. It's good to have a hazard triangle to put on the road so people see that you're stuck and need help. Good to have a flashlight in case it's dark out. It's good to have a blanket to stay warm. And if you get really stuck it's good to have a shovel. And if someone decides to come help you, have jumper cables if your battery dies. It's stuck for a while, it's good to have some water and some granola bars to eat. Brad, I think you might need to keep those winter safety tips in mind considering your driving habits. Yeah, you're probably right. Hey, have you noticed all the new teachers around our district this year? I have. With new teachers comes retiring ones too. True, true. Our reporters talked to a few staff members, and we'll say farewell to a couple beloved members whose last day was today. Senior reporters Nicole Scott and Aaron Billings here. We're going to be interviewing some new staff members at KSS. I'm here with Mr. Scharnberg. So, Mr. Scharnberg, what's your job like? <laughs> well, as it happens, I, I really like my job here. Uh, it's a ton of fun. The teachers I work with are stellar. I really, really like them a ton. Uh, the kids are super creative and intelligent and treat, treat me with respect. And um, in short, uh, I'm having a blast. Thank you for asking. Uh... Are you married? And if you are, do you have any kids? I am married. I was married in 1999. So what year is this? 2017? 18 years now of marriage. Um, it's good. I, I'm married to a, a beautiful woman named April. And my, I have a, we have one daughter. Uh, she's 10 years old. Her name is Hannah. Uh, she's a fifth grader here. Yes. So what do you like to do in your free time? Oh man, uh, anything to do with outdoor kind of stuff. Um, I'm an avid trail runner, love to run really long distances. Um, camping, hiking, biking, uh, canoeing and kayaking, all, all these kind of things are, are enjoyable for me. So if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life, what would you eat? Chipotle burritos. Sounds good. If you could have any animal as a pet, what would you have? Uh, easily, hands down, a, a blue whale. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Scharnberg. Hey, KSS. I'm here with Ike Carlson. Oh, yeah, I got a few questions for you. Uh, what's your job and favorite part about it? Uh, I'm a sixth grade teacher down here in the gold team. And my favorite part would be all the great people I get to work with every day. Got Mr. Run over there, Mr. Larson, 
Melanie Wagner, and all the RTI people over there. Great answer. Uh, second question, are you married or and have any kids? I am married, don't have any kids yet. Got a few uh, nephews and nieces in the school coming up, but uh, no kids yet. Uh, what are your favorite hobbies to do outside of school? I love to hunt, fish, uh, looking forward to the ice getting a little bit thicker so I can get out on there. And uh, really into duck hunting and goose hunting too. So, oh, What sports did you play in high school and have you ever coached? I played uh, football and track all the way throughout high school and then I wrestled for three years in there as well. Um, at my last job I coached wrestling for the last four years in Deer River and coached track as well. And then here I'm looking forward to coaching track in the spring and I helped out part time with the football team. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> uh, last question, what are you doing for Christmas this year? What am I doing for Christmas this year? Uh, sticking in town for once. I don't have to travel, uh, which is really nice. And we'll hang out with my parents and my wife's parents and have a good time, I'm sure. Thank you, Ike. I'm here with... Officer Abram Silbernagel. So, Mr. Silbernagel, uh, what made you become a police officer? Um, I guess I really just was looking to get in a profession that uh, could get a chance to help people out. Um, help people on a bad day. It was something that I was kind of always interested in since I was a young kid and was able to kind of continue on that way. Nice. So, what's your job like? Um, it, it varies from day to day. Uh, some days are quiet, which is good. Uh, some days can be very busy, but um, kind of a, a, whole, a whole range. Gotcha. So, what would you be doing right now if you weren't a police officer? Uh, if I wasn't a police officer, I would probably uh, be doing something in finance or banking, uh, business management, something like that. Nice. So, if you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would you want to go? Someplace very warm. Uh, Caribbean, ocean, with the beach, something like that. Nice. Thank you, Officer Silbernagel. Well, we're really going to miss Collette around here in the uh, Media Center and all around Kennedy. I think, as most people know, Collette is always willing to help out if anybody needs a project done. Even if it's before or after her scheduled work time, she's always ready to uh, lend a helping hand where needed. So, Colette, you will be missed. Well, it's with a uh, little bit of a heavy heart that we're sending two of our established staff members onto the next level of their uh, lives here as they retire. But Carol and Colette, um, I could express to, if I could express to you how much I'm going to miss you. There's no words to really say that, but. It's more than me. It's the student body and the school system itself that's losing two uh, stellar employees, two great people, two solid role models for our kids here at school. And thanks for all your years of dedicated service to the Fergus Falls Public Schools. Best of luck. Hey, I would just like to offer a very special congratulations to Carol Bjerke and Colette Cox, uh, who are retiring here. And uh, uh, they go back all the way back to when I first started at the uh, Fergus Falls Middle School way back when in the 1990s. And we've just appreciated their services over the course of the year, and we wish them all the best in their upcoming retirement. Thanks, gals. Enjoy retirement, ladies. A special shout out to Julie Bakken, who is retiring this month. We wish you well. Retirement sounds nice, but I'll settle for winter break. What are your plans, Brad? Uh, just planning on make a bunch of Christmas cookies. How about you? That sounds nice, but I'll probably be hitting the slopes. That sounds fantastic. Now we have some stories to get us in the holiday spirit, Matt. Have yourself. A merry little Christmas Let your heart be light From now on Your troubles will be out of sight Senior reporter here, Jessica Postoka with Lieutenant Anthony Norton And we are at the Salvation Army. Um, what services do you guys provide? Well, during the Christmas season, we provide uh, Christmas to some kids that you might even know. Um, behind me, as you can see, are toys age ranging from zero all the way up to 17. 
We also provide a Christmas dinner. Um, we provide turkey to the family, and then we give them a voucher to go to service food so that they can uh, pick out the rest of the Christmas dinner. Holidays get busy, so are you guys looking for volunteers? You know, of course we're looking for volunteers. We have uh, personal shoppers that come in with the families as the parents come through and get toys for their kids. We're always looking for people to help shop with them and make them feel welcome and uh, enjoy their experience here. That's awesome. And then um, do you guys need more donations? And if you are, what are you most looking for? Well, we're really looking for um, clothing this time of year right now. We have a lot of uh, sizes that we're really looking for, coats, kids' clothes. Um, you might have seen some of that in the uh, clip as, as, as the video walked by. Um, we're also looking for stuff for teenagers for gifts because uh, they're a little difficult to shop for. So we're looking for gifts for them. So what is the whole process of somebody who would need help this Christmas and coming in, and what's the process for that? Well, the process is uh, really easy. We have a, a sign-up sheet where you can come in and register, and we ask for a few, a few basic things. We just want to make sure that the parents live where they say they do, and then also that they have the, the kids that they're bringing in are their kids, so that we're making sure we help as many people as possible and we're not doubling up on uh, some kids. Um, that Once that's done, then they get to pick what time they want to come in. Um, it's a first come, first serve, so they get, the first person to sign up gets that slot, and it goes... Uh, we're here December 21st from 9 until 6, so 9 o'clock has 10 spots, and then 9.30 has 10 spots, so once those fill up, then you have to pick later in the day, but it's a first come, first serve in that kind of way. And uh, we do have a makeup day the following day, just in case there is a family emergency, your people are still able to come in and get those toys. Okay, thank you, Anthony, for giving us your time. I'm glad I could be here for you guys. Who are you? I am Drew Looning. Mr. Grinch. Isaac Algren. What really are your Christmas traditions? Uh, I go up to Duluth every year. Cactus, uh, we host a family Mr. dinner Grinch. and invite my huge family over. You're a bad banana with a That's exciting. Um, one of our family uh, traditions at the Tally house household is um, to have a live Christmas tree. And this year we had the joy of cutting down our own Christmas Mr. tree Grinch. off our neighbor's property. <laughs> um, yeah, our neighbor said, come, cut down one of our trees. So we did. Okay, well, when I was younger, our family tradition was to open one present on Christmas Eve and open the rest of them on Christmas Day. And so the one on Christmas Eve had to be something really entertaining to keep us entertained through Christmas Day. And... One time I opened a ballet poster up on Christmas Eve and I was really mad about that because um, it was not entertaining and I let my parents know. Our Christmas tradition is watching Christmas Vacation and eating appetizers. Alright, the Christmas tradition at my house is, you know, my mom cooks gingerbread cookie houses, all that. Cookies, you know, I sit back in the room, play 2K, you know, wrap the presents for my brothers and then, you know, they unwrap them and yeah, that's my Christmas tradition. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, they open gifts. That's about it. I try to snowmobile every Christmas. We go to our grandma's house every year and just open gifts and have a lot of fun. We make fried bread every morning. We make lefse every year. Putting the star on the tree. Senior reporter Emily Allard here with Noel Dutomnik. And Noel, do you have any Christmas traditions? I do. I decorate a Christmas tree. Nice. Senior reporter Brady Heinen here with Weston Arnson. Do you use a real or fake Christmas tree? Well, Brady, we use a fake tree. I see, I see. What do you do on Christmas? Christmas Eve every year we have pizza. Ooh, exciting. Thank you. So our Christmas tradition is every Christmas Eve we like to attend Christmas Eve services and then come home and open presents and open Santa gifts. And we have lots of fun appetizers that we eat for supper that evening. We make Christmas cookies. Senior reporter Jenna Laporte here with Sunny, Maddie, Alex McKinnell. Senior reporter Alice Move here with Naomi. <laughs> Hello. Lauren Werner. Brandon Gilland. And Lily Pruno. Logan. Marshall. Sophomore Hayden Joel. And Ethan Danner. 
Can you name all of Santa's reindeer? I think we're not in the shot. Are we in the shot? Yeah? Okay. Um, well, Rudolph, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer. R Rudolph. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen. And Rudolph. Dasher, Prancer, Dancer. Vixen, Donner. Rudolph. All right, yeah. Oh, Rudolph. Rudolph. <laughs> Rudolph, Dasher, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid. Rudolph, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen. I don't know. Did I say that already? Yeah, sure. I have no idea. I should have probably written them down. I only know Rudolph. Blitzen? I, I don't know, man. I'm just... Maybe I should put them up on the screen right here. It's like seven or eight. How many are there? What color are the mistletoe berries? Red? Red. 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 Um, red. 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 Yeah, it's definitely red. It's white. <laughs> Incorrect. They are white. Despite various beliefs. Alright. <laughs> Despite various beliefs. <laughs> Have you done your Christmas shopping yet? No. Nope. Nope. Well, no. Uh, some of it, yeah. Not at all. Yes. I started kind of. Um, no, I'm pretty last minute. In the song Frosty the Snowman, what brought Frosty to life? Okay. Oh. Uh, um. A hat. Magical hat. <laughs> the hat. Um. The magic hat. I don't know. I have no idea. I always thought it was his nose, but it was his hat. Are you on the naughty or are you on the nice list? Nice list. Naughty. Yikes. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> naughty. Naughty for sure. Definitely nice. <laughs> oh, definitely nice. I'm on the nice list. I really like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Well, actually, I have two, and I'll name them both. The first one is a Christmas story where little Ralphie asks for the Red Ryder BB gun, one of my favorite of all times. And then, of course, who could deny Clark W. Griswold in the store or the movie Christmas Vacation, one of the all-time greatest. I love Christmas movies, but my favorite is probably Elf. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Well, my favorite Christmas movie has to be A Christmas Story, because when my daughter Allie, who will be very upset with me for telling you this, was a little kid, she used to reenact Ralphie when he used to eat the mashed potatoes, like, <laughs> mommy's a little piggy. <laughs> and then we used to make kind of make fun of her for doing that, which you will probably now make fun of me for doing that, but Christmas Story. Our favorite Christmas movie is... Elf, Christmas it's Vacation. It's a Wonderful Life. Checking in twice, gonna find out who's not your nice. Uh, 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 uh. Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, go off. Uh, guys, we're rolling. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, those stories really just get us excited for winter break. Uh, before we go, let's watch a couple of student projects from the video production classes. These are parodies of the movies Hush and Annabelle. Thanks for watching and happy, happy holidays, holidays KSS. KSS. <laughs> the little sunlight will do you good. I don't know if sunlight can fix what's wrong with me.
Oh, here we go. All right, try some dog. Oh, this way. Oh, Jake, are you okay? I'm fine. I forgot my key. I left it on my other collar. Let me in. I gotta go to the bathroom. Now.
Ha, 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 ha,